All right, language fans, welcome back to this week's exciting, amazing, intrepid adventures in learning ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, doodling with purpose. Because if you're going to doodle, well, doodle with purpose. Doodle something that's going to teach you something in your spare time. All right, well, before we get to this week's homework, I owe all of the loyal listeners and classmates a huge apology because I screwed up. When I was going through last week's homework and translating it for this week's video, I realized I inverted a sign, or rather wrote the wrong sign. I put the R sign for mouth, when I should have put the M sign for owl in the second word. So we'll get to that. But yeah, I really screwed up here. So hopefully it didn't trip you up too much, but I understand if it did, because it wouldn't make sense. Maybe you figured out my mistake. Hey, we all make mistakes, but I make big ones. All right, well... That's why it takes nine years to learn to be a scribe in ancient Egypt, right? So, let's dive in. The first thing we're going to do, as always, is divide up our sentence into words, looking for those determinatives that are going to help us figure out the end of words or other words or uh, glyphs that we know go together. Once we've done that, our first word we recognize as iu, which is just an auxiliary, meaning something happened in the past. It's not translated, but it's our clue that we're about to go into the past tense. It's like a signpost for past. We now know we're in the past tense. And now we get to the word I screwed up. So instead of that mouth glyph, I should have drawn an owl, because this is the word wachum, and with the uh, water sign under it, it, it means repeat, but it means repeated, meaning did it in the past, hence our signpost before this. So this should have been the word wachum. I wrote wacher. Well, yeah. I totally screwed up on this one. I promise to do better in the future. Maybe you caught this and you figured it out, but if you were stuck, now you know why. All right, the next word we have I, au, which is the uh, papyrus, the vulture, and the chick, followed by a determinative of a man pointing up. If you remember from last week, this means to praise. Then, after that, we have her, which means before followed by muwut, the vulture, and the loaf, M-W-T, which means mother. And following that, we have the sign for a man, which this can mean I, or it can mean me, or my. So in this case, the best translation is probably going to be my, meaning my mother because it comes right after the word mother. Not, you're not going to say I mother or me mother. The next word, the hill, the mouth, the bolt of cloth, the water sign, and a determinative for a tomb is buried, Christ, with the N, the N being the past tense, because you remember we are in the past tense from our signpost at the beginning. And then finally our last word is au again, but this time the determinative is changed to a man leaning on a stick. And this changes the meaning of the word from to praise to the old. So we've translated all of our words, but there's one word that's missing, and that is going to be the word and. And recall, before we show you where it's placed, the determinative in the word au was changed. So just a refresh how it's the same word used in the sentence, but with different determinatives. All right, and I promised the word and. So there is no word for and in Egyptian. So it's going to get inserted in the uh, between the two clauses. So the whole sentence should read, I, repre I repeated praise before my mother and buried the old. And buried the old. Without it, it just says, I repeated praise before my mother buried the old. So you'll see you naturally feel like you need the English word and to make sense. And that's when you know to add it. You really read the sentence. And if it feels like it needs the word and or the or a definite articles, you add them. All right, let's move on to some new words. So we got some fun words this week to liven up our vocabulary. The first one, we have the arrowhead, the water sign, and then that sign under it is actually a determinative. It's a determinative for face. So this is the word sn, because you have the arrowhead, S-N, and then you have the water sign, N. And you remember that's just a helper sound when you have the same sound in a row, so you can cross one of them off. It's just a helper. And this is the word sn, to kiss, hence the determinative of a face, because you kiss the face, or it's one place people kiss. Next up, you may remember this one. We've done it before. 
It's a long rectangle with three dots of sand under it. So this is both a determinative and a pictogram. So it's representing the flat land or the flat earth and those, with those three dots of sand. It's pronounced ta, and it means land or earth or place. So you'll see it used quite a lot because it's, uh, well, very common. All right, next up we have our circle with a dot inside. And again, this is one we did way back when, when we were talking about determinatives. So this has a few meanings, and that's why I want to bring it up. It can mean ra, or really pronounced ra, which if you know your Egyptian mythology, ra is one of the primary gods. It can also mean sun. It is literally a picture of a sun. But it can also be pronounced haru, and that's the word for day. So a sun, hence, could mean day. But there's also another way to write day. So day could be written with a sun sign, pronounced haru, or you can actually write out the word haru with the needed signs. So H-R-U could be haru, day. Multiple ways of writing the same word. How do you know which one it is? Context clues. There's so much context clues going on in ancient Egyptian. So just remember that it's not always going to be exactly what you think. You've got to look at those context clues. And then if before the sun we put the butcher block with a loaf, which would be hurt, you would get hurt haru. Or it could be hurt ra, but in this case, hurt haru translates to throughout the course of the day. If we pronounce the sun as ra, it would be throughout the course of the ra. See how that doesn't make as much sense as throughout the course of the day? So hurt means throughout the course of the butcher's block and then the tea loaf. Putting it with haru for day, throughout the course of the day. And of course, you could spell out day as well, just like it says above it. All right, finally, let's look at the word ferry. Obviously, ancient Egypt was a culture that was very much tied to water, hence the Nile running through Egypt. So there are multiple words for ferry. The first one is the word meaning to ferry. It's a verb. The second one is a noun meaning my ferry or a ferry or the ferry or the Disneyland ferry. Probably not the Disneyland ferry. They didn't have ancient Egyptian Disneyland. All right, so that first word is going to be pronounced mahunt, the M for owl, hun, the, the headless cow, the water sign, and the loaf. And, of course, we can cross off our extra helper consonant. So this is the word to ferry. That determinative under it is the determinative for paddling. So you would paddle your ferry. And, uh, yeah, again, if you don't recognize it, it's probably a determinative. Now we have Da'a. So we have the uh, uh, mortar and pestle, da, followed by the vulture, a. So again, we have a helper consonant, followed by a determinative for a boat. So also the word ferry, but in this case, meaning an actual ferry, like a thing, hence a boat determinative versus a determinative for paddling. So if we were to put a bolt of cloth at the end, which you recall means she, she or her, this then becomes her ferry. It wouldn't be she ferry, because that doesn't make sense. All right, lastly, if you have a ferry or you want a ferry, the opposite of that would be two baby antelopes in a row, pronounced I-W, U. It really would be written ew with an extra W, but again, helper consonants get crossed off. This is the word boatless. So someone who doesn't have a ferry or can't ferry themselves across the water. They are boatless. Lots of words about boats. All right, so here is your homework for next week. I double-checked it to make sure there weren't any mistakes. I totally screwed up, and again, I apologize. Freeze frame this, rewrite it yourself, and uh, see if you could translate it before next week's lesson. Take some time. Remember to make flashcards of words, practice all of your glyphs, and I'll see you right here next week for another exciting episode of Doodling with Purpose. Like this video, like the channel, ring a bell. It all helps YouTube to share these with other people, and it's great for the algorithm. Thanks for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye now.